Now, also this morning, we got the news that Operation Warp Speed is awarding $1.6 billion to Novavax for its COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, joining us now to discuss this is Stanley Irk, the CEO of Novavax. Stanley, thanks for being with us this morning. This is the largest award that Operation Warp Speed has made yet for a vaccine uh, with the goal of potentially having 100 million doses available by the end of this year. How confident are you in being able to meet that goal? Well, we're everybody's working toward that goal. We've we've uh, started in early January when the gene sequence was first identified for for uh, coronavirus, and we've been using a a uh, manufacturing platform that we've been used on on a lot of our vaccines uh, uh, over the past years uh, to scale up, and and we think we have the capability of doing that. What the grant does is it allows us to do two things in parallel. One is to conduct phase two and phase three clinical trials, which are very expensive uh, uh, efforts uh, to show that the vaccine is number one safe, that it's effective, and that the vaccine is stable. And then in parallel, and these things are usually done in sequence, in parallel, we'll be able to uh, uh, manufacture large quantities at multiple locations in, in five or six countries. So the goal of 100 million doses by the end of the year, is this a two-dose vaccine most likely? So that could cover potentially 50 million people? That's right. We don't know for sure yet, but that's what the purpose of clinical trials is, is to show uh, whether it's one or two doses. And uh, the scale-up uh, is starting already, and we'll, we'll plan on uh, start shipping uh, the 100 million doses in the fourth quarter and be finished sometime during the first quarter of the year. And tell us about anything you can about the data you've seen so far. Uh, how much confidence does it give you that you'll be successful here in, in getting this vaccine across the finish line? Well, there, there are two possible answers to that. One is uh, data that we have now with this particular coronavirus vaccine uh, is in animals. And it shows that in, you, you always start in mice and you show that it's safe and you show that it sets off a, a potent immune response. And then you move on to the higher level animals, you go into non-human primates, uh, monkeys and baboons, and show that again, that it, sets, that it, that it uh, stimulates what they're called neutralizing antibodies and T cell responses. And, and so, and that all, that usually translates uh, from mice to, to uh, baboons and baboons to people. In the past, uh, we've done this with uh, Ebola, Ebola, Ebola vaccine, with pandemic influenza vaccines, with an influenza vaccine where we just finished a phase three clinical trial uh, where where this sequence of, of events uh, plays out uh, repeatedly. So we're, we're pretty confident that this will, this will uh, uh, stimulate a potent neutralizing immune response in humans. Well, tell us a little bit about the technology behind this vaccine. Uh, it, it does appear similar to one from Sanofi, a flu vaccine that is approved. Uh, is that right? And, and what is the track record uh, for this technology? You just mentioned your uh, phase three flu uh, vaccine results that were positive. You did have that major setback in RSV a few years ago. So what's the track record? So the track record is actually pretty good. We, we had we had a setback with RSV uh, in that we missed a clinical trial uh, objective, but the vaccine was very had very potent uh, protective responses. And so uh, with flu, as I mentioned, uh, we actually just finished a, a flu, a series of flu trials, phase one, two, and three, and we compared our vaccines against Sanofi's technology. And in all three trials, uh, we were able to show that our vaccine had an improved immune response over Sanofi. So that's been the goal of the flu program all along. And uh, But they do have a similar technology, Sanofi, and we are both using, we're making a what's called a recombinant protein. Uh, ours forms a nanoparticle, and we mix ours with an adjuvant, uh, which is a chemical that helps uh, stimulate a more potent immune response. That, that's that's the, what I wanted to, to drill down on, uh, Stanley, because do we know do, do, with certainty how, uh, as far as this specific disease goes, COVID-19, do we know how much of, of an immune response would be from, from antibodies and B cells and how important the cellular, the T cell response would be in, in giving people immunity? And, and if that's, if it's 50-50 or if it's very important, this adjuvant that you're adding, 
do you feel that your approach has an advantage to the purely uh, antibody um, methods that, that you're seeing from Moderna and others that, that don't really try? I don't think they try to stimulate T cells, do they? No, it's, 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 a, it's a really important and it's a great question. And the fact is, is that it's, nobody knows for sure. Uh, it, is, it is hypothesized that a T cell response will augment what an antibody response is. Uh, we, will, we will find out in, in clinical trials, and that's, that's why you run the clinical trials.